don't know if you pay attention to things like I do, but many times I've seen married people, um, they, they see very good movies that depict kind of love and intimacy, togetherness, unity, and love generally. And um, they'll be like, ah, more love well, ah, love well, girl. Papa say, demo, ah, <laughs> love well, kitty girl, ah. Oh girl, I don't know if you paid attention to things like that. They keep on gushing over the love they see on TV, gushing over the love, the holding of the ends, the putting on of the head on the shoulder, the parting, the staying with the person when the person is crying. They, they, they gush over it. But when you come into their marriages, that's not how it is. It's quite boring. There's no life there. Nothing. Nothing is happening. Everything is dead, kinda, or dying, or fainting. Or maybe they still have the intermittent hugs and kisses, but they're lifeless. Yeah, but I've seen things like that. And I, it's, it shouldn't be so. <laughs> so whatever the case may be, let's leave all those things aside. Let's leave whatever we see on the TV now. And try to make things work in our own homes. Let's try to make things work in our own marriages. And that is why this video is coming forth. If you have a Christian marriage, that is the more reason why it should glow. That is the more reason why it should be happy. It should be beautiful and joyful. So don't lo lose hope over your marriage yet. If you are single, this is the time for you to start noting these things down. You understand? So you can also bring this to life when you get married. And if you're married and you're just married, yeah, this is the best time for you to start making use of some of these activities. And if you're you're married and you feel that ah we have been married for ten years, nothing can happen to us anymore. No, no hope for us. No, they say, oh, you can bring this your marriage to life, young. Your marriage can become young and beautiful and sweet again with all these activities. Very quickly, I want to show us 17 activities we can actually do in our Christian marriages together with our spouses that will make our marriages sweeter and stronger. So I want you to stay on the line with me and don't go anywhere. you welcome back my name is Lizio Ibola Yakubo Mrs. Yax I am so delighted to have you here if this is your first time on this channel you're very much welcome thank you so much for coming please subscribe to this channel like this video leave me comments if you are a regular on this channel thank you so much for always coming by thank you thank you thank you please don't stop commenting and sharing this video don't stop liking God bless you abundantly in Jesus name first activity that I'm going to be talking about that you should you know, do with your spouse in your godly marriage, in your Christian marriage, is walks, going on walks, like go on walks together. I know Nigeria might not actually support walks so much because there are no many parks like that for you to walk in. But in that neighborhood where you live, you can actually still look for a place that kind of that is kind of quiet and serene where both of you can go and then just walk, just walk you leave your phones behind and just walk around you walk you talk to each other sometimes you might not talk sometimes you might be singing together no matter even if you don't have good voices no problem just sing it the way god has blessed you okay sing together just just sometimes you might not even just just walk around both of you enjoy enjoy the breeze together it's it's very wonderful like it works personally i like it immediately i become so kind of tense I just i just tell my husband can we just go on a walk can we stroll and then we just stroll we just stroll we just stroll taking in the breeze talking with him talking about things you know generally testimonies and all i'll feel so revitalized not just getting inside every time sometimes you need to breathe in some air please try it together with your spouse number two please how even you can make research holding of ends don't let it die continue to hold hands with the man and the woman you're married to, it works. Hey, hold hands. There is this chemical that is released, like not just hold hands. Oh, there's no show hold hands. Oh, let's, no, I'm saying hold hands intentionally with love. Comes your end ends together and just stroll and go to church like that. Or just be even inside the house. You might just even be sitting in front of your television, your hands clamped together and just watching the TV. But please don't let the habits or the culture of holding your ends together don't let it die it's very very important number three please dump maturity and p 
play play with each other please i i don't don't bring maturity into marriage please please try as much as possible to play with each other i'm telling you if you have a compound where people don't probably live you're the only ones that live in the compound that's beautiful when it's raining both of you can go into the rain and play together in the rain yeah like become children again if you go to the beach for instance play with the sand if you're washing car for instance use the pumping hose don't just use it on each other if you're in the room play use do pillow fights pillow plays please play like when you're inside the house run around you know do eyes and six you know just make each other happy like play dump maturity don't don't start forming oh grow up when are you gonna grow up <laughs> i don't know I, I married a child please grow up no don't do that don't do that play it is the play that makes you people younger makes your love your, your love to be younger and sweeter and stronger please try to play together and dump maturity you're not forming any maturity you're not at the place of work or something you're in your marriage and it has to work yeah yeah, it has to work. So another activity that both of you can do together is dressing up for photos. Yes, both of you can dress up for photos. He dresses up in a very amazing clothes. You dress up in a very amazing clothes. And both of you meet probably in the bedroom or the sitting room or kitchen or wherever to take photos. To take photos, just dress up in a very fine way for him, for her. Even if it is dresses you can't wear outside. Yeah, you can take pictures, find pictures, post for each other. Do you understand? And you can actually take pictures together. Nobody will, will be there to, to take pictures for you. Set, put your phone, set the timer, put it in front of both of you, and let pictures. Both of you should be doing wonderful poses and all. These pictures, you pack all of them and put them in your laptop or you save them on Google Drive. Some of these things, you can go over them with love and amazement. That photo shoot alone, even if it is one hour or 30 minutes you were able to use to do it, it will linger in your head forever. Because both of you must have done some crazy styles, some amazing um, uh, poses that will just, you might just be sitting down at work and you'll be like, God, God. say, Lizzie, what's, what's up with you? I said, I'm good, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> because you just remembered one of those poses that you did. Please try it in your marriage. Another activity both of you can do is staycations. Really, it is very good. What is staycation? Staycation is like vacation, but it's, you don't stay overnight. It happens in your environment, your city, your state. It's just for a day. You, usually not something that stays overnight. Do you understand? You could just wake up very early in the morning, like around 5 a.m., go to buy some food. You can buy food. Um, some take out, you know, some wonderful foods that both of you can eat in the morning, afternoon, night, kind of. You buy all of them, stack them up in your car or whatever, and get to a particular place you've probably booked for the day. It could be a an Airbnb, it could be a hotel, wherever. Just both of you should just get into the place and just relax there, see movies. You are outside of your environment, your house, your, the normal routine, the many works that you have to do, the cleaning of the house and all, you're out of all of them. You don't even have to cook because you're both take out, okay? And both of you will just be fine, then you talk to each other, you express your mind, you know. I think you should try to go on staycations if your marriage has been kind of boring these days. Even if it is just once in three months or something as you have the money as god has blessed you and even if it is not you can't afford mbmb or hotel and all you can do it in your house but try to like keep every distraction away forget about the place in the kitchen forget about the children the children can stay with grandma or something do you understand just try to like um have time alone with both of you alone it goes a long way to help number six please try massages yeah it's an activity that makes your marriage sweeter and stronger please try it stop being too um serious <laughs> stop being too serious what is the essence of marriage 
you are serious at in the church, you're serious at work, you're serious when you're talking with your family, that you're still serious with your wife or your husband, you're serious in your family, in your marriage. Okay, so what time do you actually have to yourself to just relax and be happy and just joyful and all? I think you should actually take comfort in the wife of your youth and the husband of your youth. Come on, please try to massage each other. You can start from the neck, you can massage the air, the air. Both of you can actually play with each other's hair like um you can just rub in your fingers into his hair you understand that it does the same thing with you i don't know if you get but it's it's kind of relax it relaxes the muscle the stress there is this chemical that is released i don't want to go into biology or chemistry <laughs> that's if i know it but really i think you should read it all because i'm talking from experience these are things that i i love I love them so much. <laughs> Don't forget about me. Okay, so and apart from that, you can actually read online. I'm very sure so many women and men actually can relate to that. Try to get into massage. You can massage the foot also, the feet of your spouse. Just massage the feet of your spouse. You could use just olive oil or um or coconut oil or any relaxing oil, lavender and all, just raw beads and just work on the legs and all. If you're on family planning though, I, you, you might not do this one. <laughs> Another activity both of you can do together is to bathe together, get into the bathroom together, open up the shower. If you have a bath, a very big bath, both of you, you can just make wonderful water with many bubbles, a lot of bubbles inside and just sprinkle some roses inside. You can also sprinkle some salts, add some salts and then just get into it and just enjoy yourselves, both of you together. No, no stress, nothing. Yeah, just like the, the disclaimer I give for the massage, if you're on family planning, you should avoid this also, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Another activity both of you can do together is complimenting each other. I don't know if you get. You could just fix a day. Like every end of the month, I want us to sit together to just give each other compliments about what has happened during the month. The way you really handled this issue was beautiful. Like, I was so amazed. That day I was mad. I was so mad. But immediately you, you you reacted that way. You just held me and said, "It is well with you, my husband. It is well with you, my husband." I just became calm. I felt so foolish. I was like, "God, what was I angry with this girl?" Say, ah. like compliment her from the bottom of her heart. Immediately you compliment her that way. Next time when something like that is going to happen, you would see that that compliment is going to come to her head again, and then she'll be able to like try to manage the situation better. She understand and then you try to compliment him also oh what you did that day you came home with tangerines for me tangerines especially you know exactly i think you knew exactly what i needed i needed tangerines that day and if you sit out with those tangerines like i just loved it those little little compliments actually goes a long way there's absolutely no way this man would see how much you appreciated the tangerines so well and wouldn't go out and buy you even much more things next time so try to set intentionally set out time to compliment each other the way you keep the house neat these days eh? i don't know seriously you are just an amazing wife you get ah the way you really helped me to iron all the clothes ah my husband a different man there's no one like you this world like just try to make the person if you don't make that person feel good because if you feel if i don't make him feel good now as i will be proud i really don't understand the kind of humility we now practice in our marriages then if you cannot make the person you love most in the world as it is supposed to be if you can't make the person feel good then um, I, I think you seriously don't know what exactly marriage is Another activity both of you can do together is dancing. <laughs> just go dancing. Yeah, you could just play some amazing Nigerian songs that are Christian. Just put them up loud, like turn it loud. Nobody's, nobody cares. Of course, not to stop your new boards, but just turn it up loud. I do like that. And just be dancing anyhow. Dance. Even if God has not blessed you with the gift of dancing, just move your body. Hmm? move your body and begin to praise god in a very amazing way with your husband holding even if your husband is a shy person oh huh? very soon you will still see him moving 
to the music to understand that's how it works yes so that dancing actually releases a kind of adrenaline <laughs> whatever it releases it and just makes it makes you feel so good you live long i'm telling you the truth though you live long oh. both of you live long you know the stressors all those things that are making you people to be stressed you might come die down to be stunts to be this growth of those stressors will not be fast you will just be dying down because you keep your excited and all so both of you should dance together move together rub your bodies together it goes a long way to help you over time please try to hug intentionally i i'm putting the word intentionally there because many times i i've realized that hugs i love you and all these little little compliments be have become so common we've commonized them in our marriages that they don't mean anything anymore a uh, woman is sweet that uh thank you good night uh have a nice day at work i love you oh uh, whatever thank you it has become so useless no i'm talking about intentionality intentionally like just intent it's not the one you just both of you already know that you do side hug or do this one and then go where this one is an intentional act you're doing you intentionally pulling his hand or a hand looking into the face smiling and you know communicating without words like non-verbally before you start to pull each other into the embrace try to do that once in a while do it for a long time let the hug be so long and intentional feel the person's body like rub especially the the neck ah. oh my god may god give us understanding amen say amen <laughs> rub the neck with the neck of your partner there is this kind of joy it brings i understand uh -huh. hug intentionally don't just do it don't commonize it and and say the i love you as you mean it i really love you i really sincerely love you like i love you so much not i love you i love you so much not that one i don't know if you understand what i'm trying to say not that one the one you mean from the bottom of your heart you want it to sink into his head into her head try to do it once in a while please please 11. Try to play games together. Mm. Try to play games together. I visited a family one of these days and when I got there, I saw a very big table tennis and I was like, ah, this mommy is quite elderly. I was like, ah, ah, mommy, you have table tennis? She said, yeah, for myself and my husband to just relax when all the children are going to school and all. I was like, oh, goals. These are goals. I don't know if you get. Like, half something in your house that both of you can use to relax like table tennis you know like games all these cards all these card games all these chairs you know okay, let me give you a game a, a game um guess body part i saw it on youtube one of these days um it, it was played between sisters though but we can do it in our marriages okay um um you blindfold the other person um and then you pick the person's hand and use the hand to touch a part of your body you know the person is, has been blindfolded so the person who doesn't really know exactly where he or she is touching so you'll be like is this your neck you understand is this your this eventually the person will remove the blindfold and realize it is the hand tricky so you can actually do that in your marriage that's a one simple game you can do and then um, some other games as well yeah you can even write all these ones you people do during receptions. You can do it in your house and oh first said I love you. You both of you argue together. No, you were the one that said you love me that day that you were telling me that this 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 you can use the opportunity to share your love story, you know, you share your love story, how you people met, how you people did shaka for each other, how this one you were totally in love, you could not even see any flaw and all the things. You understand? Just play games like that talk about the past um just play games please don't just sit down and follow the same routine of yesterday today next month next year everything is just like that immediately routine kills it kills love it kills it innovation is very good when you have innovation in your home when you bring new things into your home it gives you fresher and more beautiful life so let's try to make it work
Number 12. Look into each other's eyes again. I know you've looked into each other's eyes probably before and then but I want you to think about it now. When last did you intentionally look into each other's eyes? When last? I'd love you to please think about it. Try to look into each other's eyes again, like intentionally into the eyes. There is this connection, like not from afar, you could just come close and just look into the, into his eyes. Let him look into your eyes. It's okay to be shy. It's okay to want to enter the ground. Yeah, it's okay to have butterflies in your belly. Yeah, that's actually the the aim. That's the goal. So just do it. Look into each other's face, like, and just, I just feel so good. Just sigh in it. Sigh deeply, like. <sighs> like I don't know, just release the vapor. <laughs> feel so good. Do it. Do it. Don't feel like strangers. If we are together, do it once in a while. Number thirteen. Show interest in each other's hobbies. Uh, probably there's a hobby your husband or your wife has. You don't like it. You've expressed your disdain for it for a long time. I don't know what you see in these computer games. I don't know what you exactly see in this Z world. I don't know what you see in watching this. I don't know what you see in reading that. Just decide one of these days to say, can we just play your computer game together and see how excited your husband will be? Or say, hey, let's see, what, what are they showing in the zoo world? Let's see together. And you're like, oh my God, you're serious. Oh my God, you just made my day. I know, it would be excitement. All these little activities that you do together, you, you're, while you're doing it, you are not judgmental. You're not saying, what do you see in this thing? Or what do you like about this thing? Do you understand? You really love it. You're intentionally doing it. You don't sleep off. You try to not sleep. Try to stay awake. Every spirit of criticism, you bind it and you cast it and you resist it. And you intentionally love it because your man loves it. You intentionally love it because your woman loves it. Do you understand? So that's it. Those are the little, little hard words. They talk about when they say ah marriage actually needs hard work these are the little, little hard work it's not like you're going to market to be uh go to the farm to ask down trees no now all these little, little things might be the hard work so ditch some of your hobbies for his hobby or for a hobby you understand he doesn't he likes a food for instance you don't like it you burn this in your house but you <laughs> you intentionally make it for him that day or she likes a particular food but you said i don't want to see it in my house but you are the one that intentionally even brought on the um, ingredients for her to make it ah how amazing <laughs> it goes a long way to help number 14 please cuddle up cuddle up and watch um christian movies and read christian marriage books it's, it helps not like both of you are seated. You, you seated on this chair, you sit on that chair, and then you're like, ah, this was a movie, very good. Though. No, I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about cuddling up. Cuddle. Yeah. Try to cuddle again. But don't look at me that way. I'm a child of God. Yeah. But cuddle with your husband. Cuddle with cuddle up with your wife. Ah, that's where your righteousness is emotional more. Hold the problem. That wife that you propose to, the one you say yes, I'll marry you. Cuddle up with him. Cuddle up with her. Hold her, hold him. Both of you should hold each other and see movies. Forget about the developing feelings. It is important. It is necessary. Both of you are married. You understand? See the godly movies together and actually read Christian books together. Read, read the book I Love and Respect, for instance. Read um, um, Love Languages together. Read The Excellent Wife by um, Matter Peace. You know, you can read those books together. And it will be to, to go a long way to help you. She understands. Number 15. You can watch old photos together. You might actually go to your Google Photos and just begin to um, check old photographs. You get you can also check your photo album, your wedding photo albums, and just be laughing. See this mommy, mommy, Yaraje, see the gilly. This mommy, eh? Daddy, do you remember what she even said? She said that <laughs> this one that one. Mm -hmm. That's it's not. All those things. You might just think that it's something simple. We are building up the kind of closeness between both of you. Those are the things that make you both close. Those are the things that make your secrets to the far away from you. You expose yourself. You expose things to yourselves. Do you understand? These are the things to do to make everything work. Please.
Number 16, which is the second to the last point I'm going to be mentioning. Try to review your marriage regularly. You can review it once in a month. You can review the marriage once in three months. You can actually have some questions written down that you people follow every time you want to review your marriage. You understand? Questions like, what exactly do you love about me? What exactly do you hate about me? What have I done in the past few months that hurt you? What have I done in the past few months that you really loved? How can I be a better husband? How can I be a better wife? What do you want me to stop doing? What do you want me to start doing? On the scale of 100, how much do you love me? Do you understand? All these questions, try to do them regularly. I will encourage you to employ the use of love letters in your marriage again. Write love letters to each other. So for this review, you can actually write love letters. But you won't put the negative parts inside. Do you understand? Because it's as if you're keeping records of evil. <laughs> So you can actually just write the good part. I really love you when you do this. I love you when you do that. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for not doing this. Thank you for doing you know what Write a letter and drop it, you know. Both of you can meet to talk about it. That is when you will now mention those negative areas, what you should stop doing, what you did that hurt me. You know, you can but when you write this in letters, both of you can you can be remembering anytime you pick up the letter to read. You get so try to employ the use of love letters, review your marriage regularly, ask questions that are helpful yeah so that you can um work on them and then stop the ones that your partner does in love and employ the ones that your partner wants okay okay and so i that has brought me to the last point that i'm going to be talking about of course if i don't mention this point that means this is not mrs yaksa <laughs> pray together yeah pray together is very important a couple that pray together eh? they will slay the enemies together and then they will love each other. They will stay with each other. So please, let's try as much as possible to pray together. Um, in our devotions, let's pray together. Let's find time to also pray. Like those walks I told you about, you can walk. Those walks, you can make them prayer walks. Discuss prayers, like talk about your weaknesses. I want to be a better wife. I want to be a better husband. Really, I want to love you. I don't know. Something just keeps making me not to want to love you. Like, I just get irritated sometimes. Like, let's pray. Let's pray against this. You understand? All these things open up to each other. If you, and please, when your partner opens up to you, don't use it against your partner. Don't. If not, you'll stop that person from talking to you forever. Yeah. And that's one mistake people make. He has exposed himself to you. It doesn't feel good. You can actually express yourself. Ah, oh, it hurts me to think that that's the way you think about me. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Like, oh. And then he might apologize. He might say, yeah, that's exactly how I feel. You know, I'm so sorry. But don't do it in such a way that he might now, or she might now stop talking to you about things generally change that so still appreciate it and then in your own private you can actually pray about it let's let's tell god about it let god work on that situation yeah so in prayers you get to know each other better secrets are far away because all of you you expose yourself before god before yourself like with yourselves before god check it please pray together is very important when our prayers as husband and wife go up the answers will come down that is just it. So please let's employ this very well in our marriages. With all these activities that I've said, if you can put all of them into practice or some of them into practice, I'm very certain that your marriage is going to be sweeter and stronger. If you have many other activities, godly activities, that you feel that Christian couples can also do, like you probably do in your home or you've seen other people do, you can drop them in the comments below because I know it will be helpful to all of us. You understand we are all on the journey of making our marriages heavens on earth please take it seriously don't be lazy marriage is not for lazy people arise and make your bed arise and try to make your marriage work prayerfully as God helps you I hope you've been able to learn one thing or the other in the video for today I'm so happy that I was able to do this if this has blessed you make sure you send this to your spouse <laughs> to watch and make sure you people plan very fast on how you're going to make to choose one of these strategies activities that you do per week 
per month and all as God helps you. Kindly love this video. Leave me comments. I want to hear from you. Leave me comments. Why don't you people want to give me comments? Why don't you want to like, like this video? Like this video. Leave me comments. Subscribe to this channel if you've not and share this video with someone. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. The next time when I'll be coming your way again, I remain your specially Lizzie Oyebola Yakobo. Mrs. Yax, I want you to stay safe. To stay godly and to stay amazing. Bye.